gardeners today we're taking a look at some handmade watercolors we're going to be checking out the black sheep art supply half pans that i purchased a while back so i am super excited to dive into this review let's go ahead and find out a little bit more about this company hey there art nerds today we're taking a look at the half pan tin from black sheep art supplies so these are handmade watercolors made in the u.s and i'm really looking forward to swatching them for you guys today this is the six half pan watercolor set from black sheep art supplies i play paid 24.99 for this from the black sheep art supply shop all links will be down in the description below and what initially drew me to Black Sheep Art Supply is I saw a tweet from them saying that there was a lack of black creators in the art supply space and how they wanted to change that. And I'm paraphrasing greatly there. And I thought that's a really cool mission statement and I'd really like to help support that. So I purchased this tin to take a look at today and hopefully you guys will check them out as well. We have no other affiliation other than customer and manufacturer or person manufacturing the product. And they did not ask me to do this review, nor did they contact me to do this review. This was purchased out of pocket and all opinions are my own. But since I am dealing with a small business and a handmade product, I am definitely going to keep that in mind during the review. So according to their site, they are a black owned art supplier in the U.S. Their ultimate goal is to be put on the map as the first major black owned art supplier and create a community where black artists and other artists of color, especially women and femmes, can thrive and unite globally. We will do this by expanding their company and elevating the art and voices of other black artists and artists of color. We stand for community and creativity. So about their paints. We sell handmade watercolors with the best and brightest pigments we can find. We're dedicated to quality. We make our own patented binder in order to bring about the best performance of our paints. And their future expectations are in the future they will expand into various mediums including acrylic and oil paints we will also eventually produce our own sketchbooks markers and much more so that's really pretty exciting i certainly hope they are able to accomplish that right now the site offers individual half pans the half pan watercolor set we're taking a look at today individual full pans of watercolor a full pan watercolor set and a pride enamel pin. And remember, there's going to, be, uh, going to be a link down in the description below if you'd like to check them out. Art Supply is located in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and it is a super small team of two people. So it's a really small business and I'm sure they would appreciate your support. But enough about Black Sheep Art Supply. Let's take a look at the watercolors inside this little tin. This arrived in a purple branded bubble wrap mailer. I have since gotten rid of the mailer, but it was well packaged. I don't believe it came with a receipt. Otherwise I would have held on to that receipt, but I might be wrong. I might have tossed it by accident. So it is pretty simply branded. It is a small metal tin with a branding sticker on it. I do like that the packaging is reusable. I like that I did not have to provide my own packaging for this as well. So that helps me out because there's only so many Altoids I can eat here on the channel. So inside we have a swatch card. Seems to be made of cotton rag watercolor paper. Definitely has that feel to it. And we have our half pans labeled and individually wrapped in newspaper. So it does seem like they're utilizing some recycling in their branding, not only to keep costs down, but also perhaps to be eco-savvy, which I appreciate. And this is the six color set. In this set we have, this looks like cadmium yellow, ultra blue, cobalt violet, burnt umber, alizarin red, cadmium red light, and that's it. So it looks like we have two reds, a yellow, 
a violet, a blue, and a burnt umber in this set. These smell great already. They smell like clove oil, and as you guys remember from our stream with guest Kabocha, clove oil is often used as a preservative in watercolors to prevent them from molding. So we don't have a whole lot of mess or fuss going on here. We have our poured pa uh, pigments, our poured half pans, and then on the back, a magnet has been attached. So it'll stick in your palette. did get a bit of flaking and dust from these. Um, the ultramarine blue does seem like it has a good amount of humectant in it, as does the cadmium violet. The cadmium red and yellow, as well as the burnt umber, do seem a little bit dry, but we'll be able to check that out a little bit better once we are swatching them. Although, to be real, you know, I've reviewed a few handmade watercolors here on the channel, not nearly as much as some folks, but a few, and the Jasper Stardust ones are just so much worse already. Those things were so chalky for me. So this is already a huge improvement. The magnets on the bottoms of the half pans do a decent job of holding them in place and we have a whole lot of room to expand if we want to, which I believe Black Sheep does offer custom, ha or not custom, but bespoke half pan, or half pans and whole pans. I, sorry, Brain is very excited about these and is getting like all over the place. So if you wanted to add some colors to your collection, there's actually a fair variety of colors that you can add to this six piece tin here. It seems like their watercolor range is 16 colors total and that means there are 10 colors we don't yet have here. So if this particular color selection doesn't quite rock your world, you can put together your own set at $5 a half pan. Um, and it doesn't seem like, other than in the sets themselves, it doesn't seem like they offer any kind of mix and max mix and match bulk purchasing. Don't know why that's such a hard sentence to say, but it is. But that might be something they're interested in exploring in the future at a later date. Watching pleasure today. We are swatching on the Blick Studio Cold Press Block. You guys have seen this in a lot of my unbox and swatch videos. I use this. I use Arches. Occasionally I use Stonehenge, but it is a lot of Blick Studio. And this is a 100% cotton rag watercolor paper mold made. It's on a block, so I don't even have to stretch it. And it's very economical, which makes doing these reviews just a wee bit more affordable. If you guys enjoy these reviews, you know I buy almost everything I talk about here on the channel out of pocket. So a way you can help support the work I'm doing here is by joining me over on Patreon for just $2 a month. You will get my tutorials, which I am no longer sharing on YouTube. And you'll also get early access to reviews like this one. Not only that, but you'll get my class materials when I generate new stuff for Art Squad or when I'm teaching in-person or Zoom classes. I always make templates, I always make handouts, I always make new materials. And my amazing art nerds over on Patreon get that often to the exclusion of everyone else but my actual students. So if you enjoy art materials, if you're looking to pick up a new skill, that is a super affordable way to not only you know, hone some new skills. Maybe you want to learn watercolor. Maybe you want to learn alcohol markers. Maybe you want to make comics. Maybe you want to make zines. It's not only an affordable way to hone those art skills, but it's also a great way to support the work I'm doing here on the channel and allow me to continue to do reviews like the one we're doing today. I 
since we are reviewing handmade watercolors, it's very important to talk about some of the things I'm looking for while we're doing these swatches. When I'm reviewing handmade watercolors, I do tend to be a little bit more gentle than I would on their mass produced counterparts because these are products that are made by hand by real people, not in a factory setting, not in a mass production setting. Often they're made in very small batches and this is someone's immediate livelihood. So if I'm overly harsh with a small company like this one without excellent reason, then I could be really hurting somebody's livelihood and I take that very seriously. So I do think handmade watercolors have a place in your studio. They can really bring a lot to what you're doing and it's wonderful to be able to support a fellow small creator since many of us artists are small businesses and independently owned as well. So, you know, it's nice to be able to support and get our art supplies from a small business. And often small businesses are able to ethically source or offer more ethical alternatives when it comes to watercolor and brush making. So there are reasons to support handmade watercolors, but I do tend, do tend to judge them on a slightly different scale because my goal is to offer some suggestions, some ideas, and when necessary, some constructive criticism. So what I'm looking for with these is we're gonna be looking at activation time. These should activate fairly quickly with no colors refusing to activate. If I can't get any color off of these, one of these pans or several of these pans, that's gonna be a problem. And that's usually a formulation problem. I'm looking at granulation. Now, different artists have different preferences. Some folks like a lot of granulation. Some folks want very finely milled watercolors. I actually like a variety, but um, I don't want every color to be granulated the same necessarily and I'm not looking for like actual literal pebbles in my watercolor. I'm looking at chalkiness. Now chalkiness can come from the addition of optical brighteners like whites to make them appear more vibrant in the half pan. It can also come from just not enough binder in the formulation. I'm also looking at smearability once dry. This is not something I consider when I'm reviewing professional grade watercolors, but after the Jasper Galaxy watercolors, which are so chalky, it's something I definitely look at now with handmade watercolors because you don't want your painting to literally smear off the paper when you're done with it. I'm also looking at liftability once dry. Liftability is not a good thing or a bad thing. It lets you know how staining the watercolors are. It lets you know to an extent how likely they are to turn to mud if you do multiple layers. And it's just a good thing to know. It's not a designation of quality really. And I'm also looking for opa or looking at opacity. As a watercolor artist and comic artist, I personally prefer more transparent watercolors, but it is very much a your taste may vary sort of situation and some artists like more opaque colors. So while I'm looking at opacity, it's also not a judgment call. Although I will say watercolors that are not finely enough ground and that don't include enough binder tend to have more opacity. Uh, that kind of goes hand in hand with the chalkiness. And that was something I definitely saw with the Jasper Stardust watercolors. Now, why am I bringing them up? Because whenever I review a new art supply, I always compare it with my experiences from the past. That's why I love being able to share with you guys. I have a lot of experience reviewing watercolors. I have a lot of experience painting watercolors and I am a watercolor comic artist. So if you'd like to check out my work, you can check it out on Instagram at instagram.com slash soup or you can read my web comic, Seven Inch Kara, for free at sevenincharacom So that's a small plug, but I always like for people to know where I'm coming from when I'm reviewing art supplies because I do think it can make a big difference. I wanna give these watercolors their best chance of success. So what I'm gonna do is what I do for all my watercolor reviews. I'm going to pre-activate them with just a little bit of water. This is gonna give the pigments and the binder a chance to soak up some of that watery goodness and will allow us to get the most vibrant, most saturated swatches we possibly can. Our water has had a chance to soak in. You can actually see where it kind of absorbed into some of these pans. Now, Black Sheep says they use a specially formulated binder. And I'm kind of curious about what their formulation is. I don't expect them to tell me, but I do know that honey is a popular option as is gum Arabic. And the inclusion of clove oil not only smells lovely, 
but it also helps prevent our watercolors from molding, which is more important than you'd think when you're using a hydrophilic binder like honey. And hydrophilic just means it sucks up water from the atmosphere, so it may have a tendency to mold on you. So far, this cad yellow is very bright. I like that. It seems to be very finely milled. I like that as well. It does cloud the water a little bit, but I am used to semi-opaque and opaque cool yellows. It's a very bright sunny yellow though. Next is our cadmium red light hue. So this is like a scarlet red. Also very finely milled, not overly opaque. Next is the alizarin red. This one might be a little weaker. It's still a good color. And these colors muddy the water very quickly. So generally handmade watercolors don't include optical brighteners unless they're working with uh, cosmetic grade pigments then they might include like talc or you know mica can also sometimes be used to extend an expensive pigment. Next is burnt umber. If you're interested in learning more about handmade watercolors, if you're interested in more handmade watercolor reviews and you're looking to support small businesses when it comes to your art supply purchasing, I have a playlist of handmade watercolor reviews that I'm gonna link in the cards. I also have a workshop where myself and Kabocha talked about making your own watercolors. Although uh, Kabocha's watercolors are made using pigment, uh, I'm sorry, cosmetic quality pigments. So the sort of stuff you put on your skin. Whereas these, there's a lot of CADs in here. So this is ultra blue, which is probably ultramarine blue. So the thing about CADs is they can be kind of toxic. So I do hope they're wearing proper ventilation and maybe gloves when they're working with these pigments. Wouldn't want anybody to get sick. So that is ultramarine. And then finally we have CAD violet. So all of these activated fairly quickly, good intensity of color. There's some opacity, but I mean, that's cadmiums. They're, they tend to be a little more opaque. The colors themselves are very clean and very bright. Um, I think this is a very interesting palette selection, but I like it. Um, it is not your typical six color configuration, but I like the inclusion of burnt umber. I like the inclusion of this frankly beautiful cobalt violet with really nice granulation. Actually, ultramarine and cobalt violet both have really nice granulation. And uh, you know, that's a good, that's a good point. We ought to see how these mix. Usually I'd save that for a little longer down the line, but that's okay. So we get one yellow. So our one yellow needs to work well for mixing oranges as well as for mixing a green. So I'm laying down some swatches for some optical mixing. That was our cadmium red light. This is our alizarin red. These do good, good color pickup, good granulation, good color in general, good saturation. They smell nice, which is never a problem. Be interesting to see 
um, if they crack and craze as they dry out. I was a little concerned, I won't lie at first, because I saw a lot of bubbles. And I was concerned that that would mean that we would have a lot of um, uneven granulation, uneven milling. Um, I was also concerned that it might lead to a chalky watercolor. Obviously not. My concerns were in vain, which is beautiful. I love when I'm like, I love being proved wrong in a good way. So I'm excited about these. So these need to dry so I can do optical mixing. But over here on my Teflon desk sheet, we'll, we'll try to do a little bit of physical mixing. So that, oh, okay. All right. That is ultramarine and yellow. Now, one concern I have, and it's not really a concern, is I would want to get a phthalo blue with this set. I'd like to order a phthalo blue in the future and maybe a sap green. Oh, but it looks like they have cobalt turquoise and their cobalt violet is so beautiful. I imagine their cobalt turquoise is also very nice. So that's cad yellow, cad red. Oh yes, you can mix a really nice buttery orange like that. So far these mix nicely. Let's do ultramarine with a little bit of alizarin. nice purple. Uh, it's almost the same as the cobalt violet, but maybe a little more granulating or maybe with a little more nuance. That's with more ultramarine. This is with more alizarin crimson, or I'm sorry, alizarin red. So we can get a, a decent red violet out of that. I like it. I like it. What's left? <laughs> Let's take our orange that we mixed on the side, grab a little bit of our cobalt violet, and we should get a gray. There's just not enough pigment there. So I gotta remix it a little bit. Okay, got orange. Don't wanna pollute the half pans too much. And a little goes a long way. So that's a nice brown. I don't know that you would ever be able to mix enough violet in there. Let's add some ultramarine. Now we're starting to get into brown territory, but these mix really nicely. Um, they are finely granulated. They mix well so far. I am pretty dang impressed. I gotta tell you guys, I reviewed, as you guys know, I've reviewed several handmade watercolors and frankly, generally handmade watercolors leave me a little underwhelmed, uh, but these are really, so far these are really great. I really like these. Um, I do, me personally want a slightly different color selection, but they do have half pans available for $5 each. So I could, and I have room to add them. Um, I do want to clean up my pans and I do notice I'm going through some colors kind of quickly, but you know, that what you gonna do? That does happen with handmade watercolors. All right, so I'm gonna let these dry out and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean out my water cup as well because just to show you guys we have some chocolate milk going on and we want clean water not chocolate milk and I'm gonna clean out my pans and I'll come back and we'll do the optical blending and maybe some lift tests. Some of them are not a hundred percent dry but some of them are so I'm gonna go ahead and do the optical mixing where we layer another color on top of our existing color. So we're gonna start with the yellow up here.
So that is a glaze of cadmium red. Our alizarin red. And then I'm just going to do the ultramarine blue. My goal isn't to make like a full color chart with this. I'm just trying to demonstrate a few things. So one of my concerns with cadmiums is that they do tend to be more opaque and they tend to do really well for manual mixing and they can be iffy for optical mixing. So we will see how those go. But speaking of CADs, so I've applied our CAD yellow over our CAD red, CAD yellow over our alizarin crimson, or alizarin red, sorry, and then CAD yellow over our ultramarine blue. Oh, I have that purple. I could do that purple. Now I'm going to do CAD Red over our Ultramarine Blue and our Cobalt Violet. Then I'm going to do Alizarin Crimson over our Cat, uh, Ultramarine Blue and our CAD Violet. And I'm so sorry I keep calling it Alizarin Crimson. It's really, a, a, it's labeled Alizarin Red. I see it a lot as alizarin crimson, so that's why I'm making the mistake. You know how it is. Old habits die hard. So next, ultramarine blue over the cadmium red, and ultramarine blue over the alizarin red. Then cad violet over our cad red and cad violet over our alizarin red. And then to uh, switch out my water, cause I've got chocolate milk again, let it dry and we'll do some lift testing over here. Now that everything's had a chance to dry, we can actually see what's going on. Now, optically, if we're working with full saturation with these watercolors, which is pretty, pretty easy to do if you're not working with a palette, you're going to end up with some very difficult to decipher optical blends, a lighter glaze, especially using the ultramarine, which is a very intense ultramarine might be a better option. You'll also notice that with some of these colors, you can glaze, but they are more opaque. So that's something you're going to want to keep in mind. If you decide to get this pot, it's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Cadmiums do have a tendency to be more opaque. So it's just something you want to keep in mind. So next I'm going to do a little bit of lift testing and I've got here a flat synthetic. It's not even the scrubbiest flat synthetic. And what I'm doing is I'm looking to see there's a little bit of color lifting, but not too much. So you probably, if you're using a stiffer brush and you're going at it, you can probably lift pretty close back to the white of the paper. Something you do want to keep in mind though, is there is some color movement with some of these colors, some color pickup. So you want to be careful how you glaze these, which when it comes to opaque colors, you want to be careful with that. Anyway, you want to limit the number of layers, the number of glazes. Now, all of these seem to be at least somewhat liftable, at least right now. They're also staining. Um, so we're getting a little bit of lifting, but a lot of staining. And that's just pretty par for the course with professional grade watercolors. I would like to see Black Sheep also offer a dioxine purple. Since this violet is very granulating, it's opaque, it's not really a good mixing purple for general purpose. So a dioxine purple would be a wonderful addition if possible. How do I feel about the Black Sheep Watercolors six piece half pan set? Well, they're pros and they're cons. These are handmade in the US by a very small team. 
They offer quick activation. The colors are lovely. They seem to be very well milled. They're not chalky or stubborn to activate. They mix easily and they offer lovely granulation. What are the cons? Well, they have a slightly weird, in my opinion, color selection. I love that cad violet, but I would have found a phthalo blue more useful for mixing. This is personal preference and not really a true con. Some of the colors are pretty opaque for optical blending, and they may not be ideal for artists who like to glaze. And there seems to be no dioxin purple yet available. I also ended up adding several useful colors to my cart, and I want to point out that not all the half pans are $5. It varies by color, and some are all the way up to 8 so that's something definitely to keep in mind, but it makes sense as some pigments are more expensive than other pigments. Another thing I want to point out is it doesn't seem like there's any pigment information available. And as somebody who geeks out over pigment and likes to be able to share that information with you guys, I would like to know. I do understand why they haven't released that. They're a smaller company. They're looking to get established and they don't want to give away their secrets. I totally get it. I'm just curious and that's information I'd always like to know. I'm just using their little included watercolor swatch sheet to swatch the colors that came in this six piece set. So this gives you guys a better idea of the mass tone of these six colors. I've ordered an additional six colors from Black Sheep Art Supply, including more greens and browns. So I'm going to swatch those at the beginning of the upcoming field test video. So my verdict with the Black Sheep Art Supply six piece half pan. Well, I really like these. These might be some of my favorite purchased handmade watercolors, although I gotta tell you, in general, I have not always had the best experience with handmade watercolors. So it's really nice to receive a set that deliver what I'm actually looking for. I like the message, I wanna support the brand, and I love supporting fellow small businesses. And plus, the product is pretty good too. I would really love to see them expand more and I look forward to seeing where they take Black Sheep Art Supply in the future. They've talked about markers. I would like to see more along the lines of their watercolor line, more colors, um, maybe different palette options. Maybe they can collaborate with some other companies that are already making art supplies like handmade or custom carved brushes. Those are just ideas though. They can go any direction they like, and I would still be interested in seeing where they plan on going in the future. Plus, when they mention markers, I'm like, oh, how are you gonna do that? So um, I did order some more of these half pans, like I just mentioned. So I'm gonna do a full, a full field test of these in the future once my half pans arrive. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching my Black Sheep Art Supply review. Here are the swatches. Here are the half pans. I hope you guys will check them out. There's going to be links in the description as well as a truncated transcript because this was half scripted, half live. So if you're looking for more information, check the description down below. If they ever get to me with pigment information, I'll be sure to update the description for you guys. Um, I hope you guys will consider giving them your support, especially if you are looking for handmade watercolors. They are a fledgling company and could certainly use some business. And um, I really had a good time swatching these watercolors. I was really excited by what I saw, very pleased with what I saw. And I'm looking forward to receiving more of their colors in the mail, hopefully soon. I just paid for them and they say they ship in three to five days, although to be real, I don't expect anybody to ship that fast. That's just probably how long it'll take once they ship it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys again in the future. Bye guys.